this was taken on an iPhone as well as this, 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 and even this was taken on an iPhone. And if you've got an iPhone, you can take these photos too. G'day guys, Shane Mawson here. Today I'm gonna to show you seven tips that you didn't know about in seven minutes that's really gonna improve your iPhone photography. Tip number one is size doesn't matter. It's what you do with it that counts. And of course, what I'm talking about with size is printing size. So with phones, even the big phones like this, this is the 13 Pro Max, even these phones are quite large, but they're still smaller than DSLR cameras. And it's generally been accepted that you've got two main reasons that DSLRs are technically better than a phone. And one is dynamic range, something really bright and something really dark, and they generally don't go together. Computational photography has made that better. Printing has always been an issue with iPhones. You've not been able to print very large at all. In fact, I've printed some A2 images and that's as far as I would go, as far as size goes. But we've got a way around it now. You see, now we've got this app called Camera Plus and in that Camera Plus, it's got an ultra resolution button there. And what that means is it's gonna actually shoot a 48 megapixel photo on your iPhone and that is just bloody ridiculous. The best part about this though is that you can go and bring in old photos that you've taken previously, bring them into that app and increase the resolution of those, and you'll be able to print them bigger. In fact, you can print them twice the size of what you can print right now. Tip number two is coming to you from the land down under, and what that is, is turning your phone upside down. This is taking advantage of where this camera is located on this device. And when you bring it closer to the ground, it's that much closer and it kind of forces the perspective of looking up. Before we go to the next tip, let's hear from today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creative people. And if you're here watching my seven tips for better iPhone photography, guarantee you're gonna get something out of Skillshare. There's a few courses over there, actually there's more than a few, there's quite a few, all about mobile photography. I've done one there with Tyson Wheatley, he does mobile photography basics for Instagram and he does a lot of editing, storytelling, using different apps. There's even apps there that I've never heard of. And now that I've done his class, well, I'm actually using some of these myself. There's another class over there from Dale McManus and that's a really good course, he talks in depth about composition and different techniques to take your mobile photography up to the next level. These classes are absolutely worth doing. So whatever your goal is as a creator, head over there to Skillshare, there's a link in the description. The first thousand people to click that is going to get one month free premium Skillshare membership. You can binge and binge all those classes over there on Skillshare for the first month for absolutely nothing. Anyway, let's get back to these seven tips. Tip number three is, well, don't rush, just slow down, take your time and shoot some long exposure photos. There's a few ways that you can do long exposure photos. One is using the live mode in your regular camera app, hit live, take a photo, swipe up, change it to long exposure. There you go, long exposure photo. But what if you wanna do something hours and hours and hours long and you can do it? There's a few apps, even longer, Reflex, there's a heap of them out there. These two are probably the duck's nuts as far as I'm concerned. They're gonna get some sensational photos. Look at this photo here, this is taken with an iPhone 7. He was actually a winner of a competition there, Andy Green over in the UK, sensational photographer on a device that's really quite old. The one thing with long exposure photography though, once you move away from that live mode and wanna shoot for more than say, no, two or three seconds, you're going to need to put it on a tripod. It's a must, you just have to have it. Tip number four is to use all of the lenses. In most phones, you've got at least two. In some phones, you've got three. So use all of them. On the iPhone 13 Pro Max, you've got the ultra wide, the wide and the telephoto. Use the same scene, the same subject and shoot with all three of them. You'll be surprised of the different compositions that you'll have just by using what's already in your phone. Tip number five is using your portrait mode for anything other than headshots. And what I mean by that is use it for some artwork. Negative space photos work really, really well for this. Use your portrait mode, take a photo of something like a fence post, a building, a sign, something like that. Go into the edit afterwards in the camera, in the gallery, hit edit, go up to the top left hand corner, you've got uh, f-stop and you can adjust the f-stop and make it a little bit higher than what it took it with naturally. That's gonna bring that computational photography out of it just a little bit. Then convert that sucker to black and white and you've got a pretty good photo. Tip number six is using the camera's own night mode. There's lots of apps out there to try to help you do things at night time, but if you've got an iPhone 11 or later, use the camera app and use it in night mode. You're gonna get some sensational photos of the night sky if you do that. You can shoot 10 seconds up to 10 seconds handheld. 
put that sucker on a tripod and you're gonna shoot for 30 seconds. And 30 seconds with Pro Raw, you're gonna get some amazing photos right out of your camera as it is right now. If you've got an older iPhone previous to the iPhone 11, well, check out the playlist here. There's lots of apps there that I've done for the older iPhones to achieve some pretty good night results as well. Tip number seven is all about panoramas. It's not just for those sweeping picturesque views. You can also turn that sucker on its side, do some vertical panoramas, and you can get some pretty nice tall looking things in the single one photo. And that's pretty bloody cool. Another tip with the panorama mode, the arrow that comes up, if you hit that arrow, instead of going from left to right, you can go right to left. That's a pretty cool thing to do to get you out of some situations where the left to right just doesn't work. The photos that you saw at the beginning of this video, in the intro, they're all from the community members in the Bloody Legends Photography Group over there on Facebook. I'll put a link down in the description. It's definitely worth joining. It's a great photography group there with some great people. Anyway, guys, that's it for today. Catch you later.